All right, in this video, we're going to go over absolute configuration. This is a difficult topic for a lot of students, so hopefully this video is going to be able to help you out. So first of all, absolute configuration is a way for us to describe the spatial position of atoms or groups in a chiral center. As you'll recall from one of our previous videos, chiral centers are atoms that are bound to four different substituents. And absolute configuration is referring to designating each chiral center as an R or S configuration. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that absolute configuration does not depend on other atoms or groups in the molecule. This is different from another topic we're going to discuss, which is relative configuration. In relative configuration, you assign the configuration based on the position of one group relative to other groups in the same molecule. That's not how absolute configuration works. Okay, so now, how do we assign R or S? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to take a look at the four different substituents on your chiral center, and you want to assign priorities using the con ingold prelog rules. Now, you want to be very careful here because these steps are very important to follow in order to get the correct absolute configuration. So make sure you pay attention. The first step is you're going to take a look at your four substituents and you're going to rank by atomic number. As you'll recall, atomic number is the number of protons in your atom. So let's take a look at an example. Here we've got a molecule on the top left, and right in the center we have our chiral center. This atom is bound to four different substituents, a hydrogen, a hydroxyl, an amine, and a methyl group. So if we're assigning priority by atomic number, we can see between oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen, on the periodic table, oxygen has the greatest atomic number. So that means oxygen is going to be priority number one, Nitrogen has the second greatest atomic number, so it's two. Carbon is three, and hydrogen is four because it has the smallest atomic number of just one. Now, there are some situations where ranking by atomic numbers is not going to be enough. For instance, if we take a look at this molecule over here, our chiral center is this atom. And if you want to rank the priorities by atomic number, You've got an oxygen, you've got a carbon, you've got a hydrogen, and a deuterium. The oxygen and the carbon you can do, right? Oxygen certainly has the greatest atomic number. Carbon has the second greatest atomic number. But hydrogen and deuterium are isotopes. And isotopes have the same number of protons for different numbers of neutrons. And they both then have one proton, so we can't rank them by just atomic number. So in these situations where you have a situation where the atomic number is going to be the same, the next step of the con ingold prelog rules is to rank by atomic mass. So we want to look at the atomic mass of deuterium and hydrogen, and we know that deuterium has a greater atomic mass than hydrogen because deuterium has an extra neutron than hydrogen alone. So that would allow us to rank deuterium as priority number three and the hydrogen as priority number four. All right, but of course, we can still have even more complicated situations. What if the atomic number and the atomic mass is the same? And we do have a situation like that over here. Our central atom is our chiral center and we've got the hydrogen, we've got a hydroxyl group, then we have two carbons, right? The carbon atoms, they're both carbon. They have the same number of protons. They have the same atomic mass. So that's where we have to follow the next step of the con ingold prelog rules, which is you have to find the first point of difference. And when I say find the first point of difference, that means you have to look at what atoms are bound to those two substituents with the same atomic number and mass number. And you're going to compare those substituents. And when you compare those substituents, you're going to repeat A and B, which means you're going to compare the atomic number and the mass number again. 
Now, one other thing that's going to be important is very, very often when you're finding the first point of difference, you might encounter a double bond or a triple bond. There's a specific way you treat these according to the Kahn Engel prelog rules, and that is multiple bonds count as multiple atoms. So for instance, if you have a substituent that is double bonded to carbon, it doesn't count as one carbon, it counts as two carbons. All right, so let's apply that additional rule to this molecule over here. Starting by atomic number, we can say that the hydrox group, the oxygen is number one, the hydrogen is number four, it's got the lowest atomic number. These two carbons, as we said again, or said earlier, same atomic number, same atomic mass. So to look at the first point of difference, this carbon, you can see that it's bound to an oxygen and two hydrogens. This carbon on the top, it's double bonded to an oxygen, but that double bound to an oxygen, remember we count that as two oxygens. So you've got two oxygens and a hydrogen. So now, in comparing these two, you want to find the first point of difference. And again, we're going by A and B. So you're going to start with atomic number again. So they both have an oxygen, but the first point of difference is that on the top, you have an oxygen, whereas on the bottom, you have a hydrogen. And since oxygen has greater atomic number than hydrogen, that means that this substituent on the top is priority number two, and this is priority number three. All right. Got one more example here on the bottom right to get more practice with assigning priorities. Our chiral center is going to be this atom right here. You have to be a little careful because it looks like it only has three substituents, but you know there's a hydrogen that's not drawn in. So we'll go ahead and draw in that hydrogen, and now we can see we have four different substituents. If we want to assign priorities to them, we start by atomic number. So among the four atoms, we've got a hydrogen, two carbons, and a nitrogen. Nitrogen has the greatest atomic number, so that's number one. Hydrogen has the smallest atomic number, that's going to be number four. These two carbons, it's the same situation again. Same atomic number, same atomic mass. We have to find the first point of difference. So this carbon on the top, we can see that it's bound to a sulfur, but it's also bound to two hydrogens that aren't drawn in. So we have a sulfur and two hydrogens. Here, we have a carbon, and it's bound to an oxygen, and it's double bonded to another oxygen. Again, multiple bonds count as multiple atoms, so this counts as two oxygens, so in total we have a carbon bound to three oxygens on the bottom. So to compare these two, again, we go back to atomic number. And it's true you've got three oxygens versus a sulfur and two hydrogens, but sulfur has greater atomic number than oxygen. So because of that, the substituent on the top is priority number two, and this is priority number four. All right? So you want to make sure you're following these rules carefully. You don't want to just, you know, look at which group has greater mass because that's going to get you the wrong absolute configuration. There are these specific rules to follow. All right. So now that we know how to assign priorities to the different substituents on the chiral center, we now need to follow the next step. Now the next step, a lot of you will recall from your organic chemistry classes where you want to put the lowest priority substituent in the back and then you want to look at your substituents one, two, and three. If they're clockwise, it's R. If they're counterclockwise, it's S. That works and is perfectly fine, but you have to remember, one of the problems with that approach is if your substituent is not facing the back, all right? If your substituent is not facing away from you, you know, in this case, it's in the plane of the page, you have to redraw that molecule. All right, so you have to redraw the molecule with the hydrogen facing the back. 
or you have to be able to visualize the molecule in three dimensions, pretend you're looking at the molecule from the bottom, and that's very complicated, all right? So the approach that I'm gonna show in this video is a way for you to assign absolute configuration without ever having to redraw the molecule, and that's the right-hand rule. So we have over here, step two. Step two is the right-hand rule. You're used to hearing about this for physics, but now we're going to have a right-hand rule for organic chemistry as well. There are three steps here. And the first step, your thumb is going to point to priority number four. The second step, your fingers are going to point towards priority number one. And finally, you're going to curl your fingers and when you curl your fingers, if your fingers curl from one to two to three, then we're going to say that your absolute configuration is R. However, if you curl your fingers and you curl from one to three to two, then that's going to be S. All right, so let's go ahead and try to apply this to a few examples. For our first molecule, we want to orient our thumbs and fingers properly. But before that, I just want to review real quick what these lines, dashes, and wedges mean. So remember, if you have a line, it means that you're in the plane of the page. So that means hydrogen is in the plane of the page and points straight up. The hydroxyl group is in the plane of the page and points down and to the left. Wedges mean they're coming out of the page. So this is coming out of the page towards you and towards the bottom right. Dashes mean they're going into the page. So that means that's going into the page away from you and also facing the right. So keeping those in mind, as we said, your thumb points towards priority number four. So here, priority number four is in the plane of the page and points straight up. Your fingers point towards priority number one, which is also in the plane of the page, and it's pointing down and to the left. So you should have your thumb and fingers oriented like this. You're then going to curl your fingers, and you're going to look at what you hit next from one. And you can see when you curl your fingers, you're going to hit two and then three. So this time when you curl your fingers, it's one, two, three. So this is going to give you R for the absolute configuration. Let's take a look at another example. Here on the top right, again, thumb points towards priority number four. This time it's going into the plane of the page away from you and also to the top right. So your thumb should be pointing away from you towards that hydrogen. Your fingers should be in the plane of the page and towards the bottom left. So your hand should be oriented like this. You're then going to curl your fingers. And when you curl your fingers, you're going to see that you curl up and when you curl up, you're going to hit priority number three, and then eventually priority number two. So because you're curling one, three, two, this is going to be S for its absolute configuration. Let's take a look at another one here on the bottom left. This one's a little bit trickier because the way it's drawn is not what the molecule actually looks like. Right, that plus sign doesn't mean all those substituents are in the plane of the page. You have to remember this is a Fisher projection. And in a Fisher projection, you need to remember the horizontal substituents are coming out of the page and the vertical substituents are going into the plane of the page. So one of the common ways to memorize this is to just pretend that someone is coming and giving you a hug. So that means the horizontal substituents are coming towards you and the vertical substituents are going away from you. All right, so keeping that in mind, our thumb is gonna be priority number four. That means it should be facing the right and coming out of the page towards us. Our fingers should be pointing to priority number one, so they should be facing the left and also towards us. So this is what your hands should look like. When you curl your fingers, 
you're clearly curling down. So the next substituent you're going to hit is priority number three, and eventually you'll curl up to priority number two. So in this case, we're curling one, three, two. So this is also going to be S for its absolute configuration.